everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today we're going to go through a little bit of a balance sequence. So hopefully you are all feeling balanced and you're feeling hydrated and you've slept well and you're going to do really well staying upright. And if not, so be it. Um, to begin with, I want you to, first off, I want you to go back and watch my Found feet foundations video, but if you haven't watched that, um, I just want us to be able to find um, basically like a neutral stance where our weight is even within our feet. When I talk about the feet, I want you to think about sort of the inner foot and the outer foot and the front of the foot in the ball of the foot near the toes and then in the back of the foot. I want you to take your weight and distribute it evenly throughout your feet. Maybe take your pelvis back to see where that is. If you're in your heels, if all the weight goes to your heels, shift the pelvis forward, all the weight goes into my toes. I wanna find kind of a place for my pelvis that's neutral for both of those. And then also within my feet, I don't want them to be rolled out and supinating. I don't want them to be rolled in, kind of knock kneed. I want it to be nice and neutral so that everything is stacked up. That's the best way that you're going to find balance. And then we're just gonna go, we're gonna start with tree. So option one, foot on the floor, heel up. Option two, foot on the calf. And option number three is maybe to take the heel up towards the thigh. In this pose here, I want you to think about growing roots down into that foot and engage this quad so you're your quad and your leg, your thigh is pushing into that foot just as much as that foot is pushing into your leg. So it's almost like you're pressing together to keep that sensation there. Same thing if the foot is on the calf. Think about pressing the calf, engaging the muscle so the foot has something to press into. So it's not just like a soft pillow that's gonna fall down and lose its oomph as it's there. We're gonna breathe here. If you've got the leg all the way up, I want you to notice the angle of the thigh and I want you to notice where your hips are. So most of us, our thigh, our leg cannot come out and rotate externally all the way around. If I were to shift my pelvis here all the way, I could have the leg out to the side, um, but in relative space, it's the same. This hasn't changed. This distance is the same, whether this is pointing this way and my leg is to the side or it's pointing straight. Generally, keep the pelvis straight above the knee, the ankle and the foot. Breathing here, are you still stable? Lift up the toes, pressing into the big toe mound, this part right here, press into that. See if you can lift your toes, light up the arch, and grow roots. This will help you to balance in your balance poses, I promise. And then if you're feeling strong and stable, maybe start to move your arms. And if that doesn't change anything, change your drishti, look up to where the ceiling meets the wall, or maybe start to look around. Look at your cat or your dog or your kids or something that's moving, maybe a tree outside. See if that changes. And if, if you're still upright and you haven't fallen over yet, close your eyes. Notice how that changes your perception of where your body is in space. See if you can activate your stabilizers in your leg in order to keep yourself upright. Go ahead and open them. We're gonna switch sides. So hopefully this left leg is feeling on fire, you did good. So, options. On your toes, with your heel in towards your leg, you can also be holding onto a counter or a wall and then just tap it and come away from it depending on where your balance is today. You can have your foot on your calf or you can have your heel against your thigh. The only place I do not like the foot in this pose is against the knee because it puts added pressure on a knee that's a hinge joint that just should be moving like this, not side to side. So we're going to engage the thigh so it presses into the foot, have that nice pressure there. I'm going to focus on my foot down below, make sure that my weight is distributed evenly, lift up the toes, light up my arch, press into the big toe mound that lights up my calf, and then hopefully 
that will give you the sensation like you've grown roots in your tree. Breathing here. If you're still stable, maybe start to move your arms. Seaweed arms, maybe arms up high or in prayer or down below or in full movement. And then if you still are upright, change your drishti, looking up and around. Notice if this leg is easier or harder than the last one. Notice if you can look at something that's moving. Is there a window you can see in something moving outside or something inside your environment? Then if you're still upright, go ahead and close your eyes. Notice how that changes the sensation. Notice how we compensate with our arms. Continuing to try to adhere to all of those points in our feet and noticing how our whole leg lights up when we do that. Nicely done. Open your eyes and step down, shake it out. This is a lot of work on the legs. This is a lot of balance stuff. We're gonna try half moon next. So if you'd like to grab a block, you can do that. If you'd like to use a railing or a countertop or a desk or a table or even a wall to come, you can do that. So I'm gonna set my block probably about two or three feet forward of my front foot. My foot is going to face that front block and then I'm just going to begin to hinge forward with my body. And then once I'm at a place that I feel fairly stable with my body hinged forward, I'm gonna maybe start to reach for that block. For some people, you can, you can reach this already and it's no big deal and you can move it around. For other people, this will be where you're at until you start to raise that back leg. And then you can start to hinge forward, maybe reaching for a railing or the wall. But once we actually come down into that place, we're gonna lift this hip up just as much as is comfortable for you. Our hips, especially for women, our SI joints probably don't like this very much. So I never fully stack um, my hips here like some yoga teaches. It just doesn't feel good in my body. I encourage you to notice what feels good in your body and do what feels good to you. We're gonna to try to extend through that back heel, flexing through the foot, almost as though I'm pressing into a wall behind me, and then again, lighting up through my bottom foot. Maybe lifting the toes, pressing into that big toe mound. Breathing here. Half moon. Go ahead and come down. If that was wobbly for you, that is totally normal. And we're gonna to get to something that will help that in a second. So we're gonna take the block to the opposite side, or you're gonna flip yourself around so you're using the counter or the table or the railing or the wall. We're gonna to begin to hinge with the body first, then take the leg back, reaching for whatever object you have. I'm hitting something behind me, so I'm gonna come forward. Once I am tilted forward and my hand is on whatever I would like it to be on, you can also opt not to have your hand on anything. I'm gonna take this leg up, stacking the hips slightly, not all the way. You shouldn't feel any compression in your low back. And then maybe taking the arm up, maybe shifting the gaze, flexing through that back heel, flexing through this front foot, pushing into the big toe mound, noticing where your weight is and trying to even it out between the inner heel and the inner foot and the outer foot. And then I want you to notice this back heel. A lot of people in this pose swing it back and then they end up losing their balance that way. So really notice when you come into half moon that you can see it if you were to look with your peripheral vision and that you're not throwing it back because then this foot tends to do this and the whole thing falls over. So we're gonna do something real quick and then we're gonna come back to half moon to work on your stability, to work on the body and brain connection. Um, this is an Eloda exercise that was taught to me by Cecily Milne of Yoga Detour and it has been incredible for the private clients that I see. So if you want something to stabilize yourself, grab a block, grab a wall, 
but we're going to try if we're holding against support just to very gently come away from it. So I'm coming into sort of a 90 degree angle with my hips and then I'm going to come on to that tiptoe of that right foot. And then if I can still stay stable here, I'm going to see if I can just lift it up and set it down and lift it up and set it down. And when that starts to become stable, I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to see if I can start moving it around and start to see what I can do before I fall over. I'm going to try to tap behind me and then come forward and in front of me and then out to the side and one more time in front and out to the side. And you'll probably start to notice that with time, this movement becomes more stable. Your brain is starting to understand what it needs to do to keep you in this position. Good? All right. Half moon. First side. So I'm going to set my wall or my railing or my block in front of me if that's what I'm using. I'm going to begin to hinge forward with my torso. Begin to take the back leg back, maybe lean forward. Maybe you find you don't need a prop this time. Flexing through the back heel, maybe starting to stack the hips a little bit, maybe shifting the gaze, really focusing on the stability muscles, lighting up through the calf and the thigh, and then inhaling and exhaling in half moon. And hopefully, that felt more stable than the first one. Let's try the other side. So if you're using a block, maybe setting a block down or having a wall next to you, coming into that 90 degree angle, kind of like a low lunge, coming up onto the left toes. And then maybe lifting up, coming down, lifting up, coming down. Noticing maybe if one side is easier than the other and absolutely using your arms to counterbalance. Continuing to breathe and then trying to have your leg go in very specific locations. Can you control what it's doing in this position? And where can you send it that seems a little bit out of control? Getting to those areas that are out of control in a manner like this that's fairly safe teaches our body what to do in those situations and gives our brain, gets our brain online for what is in our control and how to work those muscles in order to balance better. All right, hopefully that was good. Hopefully your muscles are starting to be a little bit fatigued. This is a lot of work. So half moon on the other side, grabbing whatever props or tools or walls you need, hinging forward with the torso, sending that back knee out, maybe reaching towards your prop or not, flexing through that back heel, really engaging through the muscles. You can see I'm starting to shake here. That just means that those stabilizer muscles maybe haven't been worked enough or maybe they're just exhausted at this point. And noticing when you do fall, when you do catch yourself, it's all good. It's all a learning. Hopefully that side felt more stable. Hopefully you've learned some tools for your balances moving forward into your practice. You can take these into warrior three. You can take it into standing splits. Um, you can take it into a number of the different foot standing balances. Hand standing is different. Um, but just getting all of those stabilizers on board and getting the feet lit up so that your body can better balance itself. Thank you for joining me today. The light in me honors and acknowledges the light in each of you. Namaste.